welcome to Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Diane Duncan. And we usually do Coffee Chat, but today we are having Gatorade Chat. Because usually I have a um, lady to interview because I am part of Grace Women's Ministry. But I wanted to um, twist it up a little bit and change it and hopefully bless all of us with um, my dear friend, Greg Carbon. I interviewed his wife um, a few weeks ago, but I wanted to talk to Greg because Greg is a strength and conditioning coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. And I know several women and several men are Chiefs fans around here that might catch this episode. So um, I got a hold of Greg and he was gracious enough to come out and um, tape this interview with me. So thank you very much, Greg, for coming. You're welcome, happy to be here. Good. So. <laughs> So much, I'm sure that everybody would love to ask you, but what I'd like to start off with is, I know uh, a bit about your testimony, but I would like for you to share, what is your testimony? How did you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Uh, <clears throat> I came to know Jesus Christ in the middle school. Uh, I remember going home, riding in the car with my dad after one of my basketball games, and uh, he told me that you know, he had something in the works. He really wouldn't touch on what it was. I was kind of pressing him hard, like, what is it, you know? And before we got home, eventually he told me that he was going to become a pastor. And he told me his story of when he was younger, how he had a dream of him at a pulpit in a white suit, you know, and it was finally coming to fruition. And shortly after, um, I began going to church with my dad um, to see, you know, what was his new, his newfound, um, you know, enjoyment um, that was changing him. Because my dad was a hard man, uh, worked really hard. He liked and valued his time, so he really didn't want the kids around <laughs> when he was on the couch watching boxing. And um, loved my mom. I have her servant's heart. I'm definitely a mama's boy, but there was a longing for my dad for a long time that I didn't realize until I was older. But um, began going to church with my dad, which led to me going to Bible studies with my dad as well on Wednesdays. Um, I'm flash forward into the summer months now. Um, our church was about 30 minutes away from Jeff City, so it was a 30-minute ride to the church and a 30 minutes back. And it was just my dad and myself. Um, so we go, I have this great devotional, and this is probably the first time I'm really learning about God and Jesus. Um, and I didn't know a whole lot. So I was very inquisitive on the way to and from church. So <clears throat> my dad had the opportunity to basically give me scriptures, give me sermons, you know, uh, as we were going to and from church and or Bible study and I'm learning and I'm, I'm young and I'm eating it up and you know he's filling my heart with the word and um, I remember being in the eighth grade just before uh, that school year ending giving my life that that spring it's almost like I felt someone push me when I was in a church because it was at the end of church and our head pastor was saying, is there anyone who wants to come up and give their, their life to the Lord? And, you know, typically, eighth grade, I'm very conscious, like, who's looking, right? And, like, in your heart, you feel like, maybe I want to go, but I don't want people to look at me. But, like, I swear I felt like a little shove in the back. And I told my mom I wanted to give my life to the, to the Lord that day. And she went up there with me. And, you know, I got to tell the pastor and my dad was an associate pastor at the time that I was giving my life to the Lord. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for those experiences with my dad and uh, him giving his life to the Lord, uh, wouldn't have you know, propelled me to do the same. So I think there was a longing for my dad and that led me to the longing for you know, my heavenly father. So That is not at all where I thought this was gonna go and I love that. Because, I mean, we know that parents are important. We know that dads are important. But wow, what a testimony to hear that 
your dad poured so much time into you, so much knowledge into you, and, and just poured scripture into you. And wow, he got to see you come to know the Lord at the end of eighth grade, which if anybody knows anything, middle school is such a tumultuous time, and especially for a young man. And to take that brave of a step, wow, that's huge. Yeah, it was incredible because the eighth grade, that's kind of when I gave my mom a hard time because there were some spells in there where you are a teenage boy and you don't know how to articulate your emotions sometimes and sometimes it, you know, spills out into something else. And even to this day, I regret that. (laughs) But again, I think that just shows how important, you know, um, the Lord is and how he works, you know, through the people closest to you um, to give you the opportunity to to give your life to him. So, yeah, it's it's awesome. (laughs) And, And as a mama, whatever you said and however you behaved with your mom, I'm sure all is forgiven and probably forgotten. Oh, it is. It is. And anytime she brings it up, my head goes down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, I mean, she she's my heart outside of Marion. Right. So to know, you know, I put her through some pain, you know, that, that never makes you feel good. And no. That's why, now that I'm a father, hopefully I can guide my son, my daughter, you know, um, to more of a loving heart. So, when they are middle school, they don't do what I did. <laughs> so, yeah, well, so. you're a pretty great guy, so I'm sure that, that you're probably harder on yourself. But that's not what people want to hear about. What they want okay. to hear about are the Chiefs. All right. So what is it like working with the Chiefs? Man, it, it's something that I really can't comprehend at all. Uh-huh. I mean, just my path getting to Kansas City, um, definitely couldn't explain and wouldn't have guessed in a million years that I'd be working with the Chiefs and experiencing the Super Bowl. Um, but I, I'll say this, uh, Coach Reed is one of the most God-fearing people I've ever met. Um, he does an exceptional job of surrounding himself with assistant coaches who are great men. He also teaches those guys to be good fathers and good husbands himself and the players that he brings in are good character guys and he is just a phenomenal person he's almost like he's almost like your dad that's the aura that he gives you like when you speak to him it's like oh man he's like a really cool dad but at the same time like you don't want to poke the bear because he could be a grizzly too it's like (laughs) it's like as long as I don't do it you know but uh I mean, he's just a phenomenal person, and my boss, Barry Rubin, a God-fearing man as well, um, best boss I've ever worked for, uh, genuinely cares about all of his assistants, puts us before him. Um, he reads a devotional every morning before we start work, which I think is phenomenal. He writes scripture on his uh, dry erase board. So these are the men that I'm surrounded around and that get to mentor me now, and uh it's phenomenal. And even our guys, men of faith, for every game we pray. Um, and we, we have different players who come up and give the prayer before our games. And some guys, when they pray, it's fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is fire. It, get, it gets us going. It gets our guys going. And uh, one of the coolest things I thought was Thanksgiving. You know, we practiced the day of that Thursday. <clears throat> And the way we ended practice was team came to the middle of the field, everyone was on one knee, held hands, and we said a prayer before we left the facility. So it's it's been really cool so far. That's neat. Really cool. So you've been working with them for about a year. Mm-hmm. Well, like, uh, yeah, yeah, so a, a year, probably April the 10th. Oh, so your anniversary just... Uh, yeah, just kind of... Awesome. Yeah, came around. And one of the things... Um, <clears throat> You know, you and we, we talked about how you and Jason talk Chiefs and stuff all the time. Um, and I don't get in on all those conversations. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things I heard you say was that um, Coach Reed and, and your boss care about the person. Mm-hmm. So can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah. Um, well, what have you probably heard me say in the past was um, Coach Reed, his biggest thing to the guys every day in our team meetings was guys, we want you to be you. 
coaches included. You guys be you. Um, so the way I coach a guy, I have to coach the young man's personality, you know, and I have to evolve and adapt to him because Coach Reed believes that if we can come together as a unit, <clears throat> being ourselves, we're going to be a family. And he believes that's what wins football games, you know. Um, and we have some characters, you know, <laughs> who, who all come from different backgrounds and have different experiences. And, you know, whatever it is that allows them to play at a high level, you know, we, we got to roll with, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not one set of instructions of how to coach, mm -hmm. you know, uh, each guy. So Coach Reed does a really good job of empowering the coaches and the players to be themselves and to um, attack each day the best to our abilities. And we just kind of adapt and, and go. So um, I really do believe that's what helped us win a championship because I'm, <clears throat> I'm stretching some of the guys in the locker room day of the Super Bowl, you know, uh, in Miami, the music's blasting in the locker room. And I'm looking around, trying to take it all in. And I'm just looking at the guys. I'm like, these guys aren't nervous. They're treating it like it's another game at Arrowhead. Those were the vibes that I was getting. And everything was the same. Everything was routine, like no different from any other game leading up to the Super Bowl. And that's when I knew we had an opportunity to win because these guys weren't nervous. They were just being themselves because they were allowed to the entire season. And it was really cool to see. We came back in at halftime, getting no nerves. It was the same, you know. So uh, for it to come out the way it did that game, you know, I think it had a lot to do with, you know, Coach Reed and his leadership allowing us to be us. And it was good enough to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Y'all did something right, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's neat. So, I mean, a silly question, I'm, I'm sure, but I, I still want to hear your thoughts. What was it like? I mean, because there for a minute we were like, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to win it. And then it was like, oh, we won, you know. So yeah. I'm sure it was the same, but I mean, just talk to me. What was it yeah. like? Well, you know what, being, being in the facility with the guys every day uh, and having 15 on your team, like you always feel like you have a shot. And I'm on the sideline, it's fourth quarter. Um, you know, we're, we're down pretty big. And I think defense is just took the field, and it was the last three and out before Pat got the ball and went on his run. And that was the first time that I think I really got nervous in the game. I was like, okay, like defense, we need to get this stop. And if we can do that, we'll be good because – I've seen 15 do this now <laughs> way yeah. too many times. Right. And, you know, uh, we got the three and out. And then when Pat took the team down and scored, I knew we were going to win then because, again, 15 is special. And uh, it's one of those things where you see his greatness every day. You kind of take it for granted. Like, you know, if he doesn't have a great day in practice to, to our standards, you know, he's still better than – 90% of the quarterbacks out there, right. you know, on a bad day. Right. Um, but uh, he carries the entire organization on his shoulders, and he's so young, and he's so confident, and he's so consistent in his routine every day that you just trust him. Mm -hmm. And, again, as long as we had 15, I knew we had an opportunity, and 15 didn't let, you know, the kingdom down at exactly. all. Exactly. <laughs> that was a good way to put it. He did not let the kingdom <laughs> he down. He did not let – and he, he wasn't going to let the kingdom down. He's just a phenomenal young man. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it, was, it was just an exciting time. It was surreal. Couldn't comprehend it at all. Um, <clears throat> you know, when the confetti was coming down um, over the field, I'm kind of taking the story in a different direction now. Um, but uh, you dream of winning a Super Bowl – and you feel like it's in God's plans or whatnot. But um, I thought, wow, it's happening, you know. And at the same time, I thought it was happening. Like the Lord told me, this isn't the biggest, most greatest thing that's going to happen to you. Like, this isn't it. This isn't it. And that kind of threw me back in the moment. Because, you know, confetti's coming down, looking for Marion. Right. Everybody's celebrating 
it's like, this isn't it. Like, what could be greater than this? And I'm dwelling on this, you know, the week um, after the Super Bowl. I'm in the facility. I'm working. And, um, you know, I'm talking to God every day. I'm like, what, what did you mean? And it, he finally told me. Um, he put my family on my heart. And he told me that this is an opportunity in terms of my experience winning the Super Bowl. It's my opportunity to um, share my experience, my story, to help lead people to him, to strike up a conversation, and maybe to serve other people with this, serve, uh, with this story. But most importantly, the biggest thing that I can accomplish is when my son and my daughter come to me and tell me they want to give their life to Jesus Christ. So, like, there's nothing that can compare to exactly to that. There's yep. no Super Bowl, no anything. Yep. So, like, that's my my next big thing. Can I lead my two little minions at home <laughs> to to Christ? Sure. You know, and that's going to be a challenge. So, that's the biggest challenge that you know I want to knock off the bucket list. Sure. So. Well, when that happens, you call Miss Diana and Mr. Jason, and we'll have the confetti, and we'll throw it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it yeah. can come down. And <laughs> that would be awesome. That <laughs> we'll would take be them awesome. on a little parade, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> well, it takes. No, and, like, nothing, nothing could compare to that. No, not nothing. at all. So, I, I know I kind of went off. No, that's fine. But, like, considering circumstances, uh, I thought it'd be cool to share that. No, totally. Yeah, because you hadn't shared that with me. I don't know if you'd shared that with Jason. I hadn't shared it with many people. Um, it's one of those things where, you know... You don't know who really might believe you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I know, like, the people of faith, they understand where I'm coming from. Totally. You know? And, and just speaking from um, being a part of my children coming to know Jesus, um, it's exciting, but it's also that, that blessed assurance that you know. <laughs> um, Pastor Darrell did a sermon series one time on being, on be there, you mm -hmm. know, be in heaven. When I get there, I want you to be there. And so they're, they're, as a parent, it's just so awesome knowing that when I get to heaven, my kids are going to be there yes. as well. So <laughs> yeah, I totally get what you're saying. 100%. Yes, a Chief Super Bowl win is amazing. The parade probably knocked my socks off. <laughs> yeah. but, but ultimately, it's not eternal. Uh -huh. And yet, my kids being in heaven with me is eternal. So I totally yeah. get what God was saying to you, man. Yes, yeah. And Good stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was just amazing to... To know that he put that on my heart and to know I had a task at hand to, you know, attack. Yes. <laughs> and to they do. A, a responsibility. <laughs> a, a responsibility. Right. 100%. A calling. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. Good. So. Well, I can't wait for those two little ones. But, um, okay. So just for fun, uh -huh. tell me who or you don't have to say names, but okay. um, if you were to pick the best cook, the best chef mm, okay. on the team, who would you pick? Man, I definitely... Pick. Man, it, it'd be between a couple of guys on our offensive line, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the guys, they'll, they'll talk about, you know, some cooking contests <laughs> they've been in. or Between themselves but, or like or that they entered? That they entered or, you wow. know, maybe they were a guest on a show or whatnot where they've had to cook something. Um, so uh, I'd say our O-line, uh, they, they could probably throw down in the kitchen a little bit mm -hmm. and... Uh, you hear some of these guys talk about some of the dishes that they made, and you're like, oh, wow, like, be a chef. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bring that know? in. <laughs> yeah, like, let, let's go. Yeah. yeah and, and, and those guys in the O-line, too, they're, they're so intelligent. Like, you just know, like, they, they probably know whatever it is that they're doing inside and out, and I'm sure they know food. Wow. <laughs> you know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So i definitely pick a guy on our O-line would be best cook, best chef, no doubt. Who would you say um, would be maybe the funniest? Ooh, funniest. I would, that goes to our special team guys, like all three of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those guys are, I mean, they're just clowns. It's kind of like they're their own umbrella. You got, you know, 48 guys over here uh -huh. and you got those three, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. But their schedule is a little different, so, you know, they... Uh, they always keep it light, and they're always pulling pranks, whether it be... That was going to be my next question. Who <laughs> yeah. pulls the most pranks? Uh, so special teams, huh? Man, special teams, for <laughs> sure. Um, uh, so, 
uh, James Winchester uh, got me one night. I was doing bed checks. I can't remember what city we were in, but the strength staff, we do bed checks at night. So we just kind of knock on their door, make sure they're there. Um, but I had just seen James in another room. He was heading back to his room. So I knew James was awake. Um, I had got to James's room, knocked on his door, you know, no answer. I opened the door to pop my head in to see if James is in there. And all of a sudden, I just feel a hand reach from nowhere and grab me. And I kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> get freaked out and scared. <laughs> sure. Oh, and James and the head of security who's with me, they just start cracking. Oh, sure. Because, like, my heart just <laughs> dropped. And, yeah. I I'm mean, sure you probably let out a scream <laughs> or something, too. You know, right? like, I, yeah, I kind of backed up. I probably <laughs> did scream. <laughs> Got my hands up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, but, like... It was a it was a it was a big laugh for me after the fact. After <laughs> yeah. when your heart rate slipped. Oh yeah, and then the next day when you're going down for breakfast, you know, the guy oh her James got you last sure, night. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like uh, those have been some pretty cool moments for me personally, you sure. know, to experience with those guys. But uh, yeah, those those three specialists are they're who to be around for sure, for sure. What was the parade like? Oh man, the parade. I mean, that was a lot of love from not just Kansas Cityans, but I mean, I think probably people from at least a quad state area, if not more. Yeah. Okay. All the red <laughs> downtown was, was amazing. Some of the stories that I've heard, you know, um, parents getting their kids up at four and five in the morning to post up at six in the morning just to see, you know, I don't know, a three minute glance of you know, your, your Super Bowl winning team. Mm -hmm. Those were really cool. You had people hanging out of trees, people just finding nooks and crannies to, to squeeze into just to get a, 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 a look mm -hmm. at the parade. And that was so amazing to see what the Super Bowl meant to the city of Kansas City. And like you said, the tri-state area. Because um, I remember when the Chiefs weren't that great and listening to the radio shows and hearing those frustrated fans. So to see what Coach Coach Reed has done with the team, I mean, it just makes you feel so good because Kansas City is deserving. You know, they've been waiting a long time. And the cool thing for me was when we were in Miami, we were in Miami for eight days preparing for the Super Bowl, and I would call home to see how the kids were doing and, talking to some of my friends who were still in St. Joe or Kansas City era, and they were telling me the stories of, you know, what the city was doing for the Chiefs while we were away, and just the vibes that were around Kansas City and the excitement, and I wish I could also have been a part of that, you yeah. know, the lead up to the Super Bowl. Um, so I thought those were some pretty cool stories to hear while I was in Miami, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, yeah deserving fans for sure. I know, I think that um, the consensus I got was just the energy and the spirit and everything, but even if you weren't a Chiefs fan, um, for those, you know, few weeks mm -hmm. leading up to the Super Bowl, I don't care who you were, if you lived in this area, you were cheering for the Chiefs. Yeah. You know, I mean, you were a Chiefs fan just to get them through the Super Bowl. You know, you mm -hmm. wanted, I don't care who you were, you wanted to see them win, you uh -huh. know? And that was exciting because just the, the air of everything going around, the energy, you know, yeah. it was just love and friendship. Yeah. You know? It, and it was really cool because there was a lot of people who would come and speak to, you know, the team, whether it was in our team meeting or in, at practice, you know, uh, Hall of Famers like Brett Favre or Don McNabb, um, Jimmy Johnson, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where they want to see good people do well. And Coach Reed is an amazing man. And it's hard to root against Coach Reed, you know, and, and the players that he brings in. So it was really cool to see those people in support of us. Uh, it, was, it was just an amazing, amazing experience to hear those people talk and just support our guys. Um, it just gave us the vibes that, you know, we're good enough and who we are to go out and win this thing. So it was cool. It was really cool. Well, <clears throat> I want to wrap this up with a couple of things. My first thing, um, was there a, a scripture 
Was there a passage? Was there uh, a quiet time, something um, that, that helped you get through this last year, that encouraged you, or maybe helped you through the Super Bowl? Anything that, that God really laid on your heart besides, obviously, at the Super Bowl? But to just, because I know that had to be a journey. You're starting out. This is your first year with the Chiefs. And they go to the Super Bowl. So Jason and I like to think it's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I would probably say, you know, there were so many emotions that I had this this past year. Because uh, the weight room stuff is easy. A squat's a squat. And bench is a bench. Like, there's a couple techniques. And evaluate this. Um, there's measurables you can take to obtain success. But everything that comes with uh, the professional level in terms of, you know, the way we need to handle ourselves in and out of the facility, even to, you know, our dress attire that we wear. Like, it, it was a new experience for me. Um, I'd probably say, like, I'm used to kind of being blue collar. Now, feeling like I'm more in like a white collar-esque world. Um, and it was a challenge to adapt. You know, because there's a lot of privileges that come with it. And, you know, with some of those privileges, you feel uncomfortable, um, you know. Uh, for, I don't know if I'm articulating this well enough, but, you know, um, it's one of those things where I'm so blue collar that I'll say no a lot or no, I don't need this. But, like, uh, at the professional, you're kind of catered to. A little bit and for me that was a little uncomfortable because I wasn't I wasn't used to it sure. so that was a challenge and to know if I was doing a good job or not I didn't know you know because mm -hmm. you're pretty hard on yourself at night especially when you care a lot so I would say there was a lot of angst um, a little anxious and you know just not knowing because this was a new journey for me sure um, so I'd probably say I don't know. I try to internalize a lot of my emotions and then go find something in the Bible. And I want to say it was maybe Isaiah 55, uh, verse 8 and 9, where it just talks about, um, you know, our thoughts aren't God's thoughts and our ways aren't his ways. Um, and essentially, you know, he's in heaven, war on earth. We can't comprehend his plan for us. And there's comfort, you know, in all circumstances that he puts us in where we're going to come out with faith, trust, wisdom, and character. So I'd probably say I thought about that often and just kind of took one day at a time and said, God, like, you're in control. I'm like, I'm going to make the best out of whatever comes my way. You know, and it was it was a roller coaster, <laughs> you know, and um, at the end of the day, like confetti's coming down on the on the field, and a week later, I know like what my next you know responsibility is, you know, with my kids, and yeah, I, so I'd, I'd probably say like that's what I leaned on a lot this year it was probably you know Isaiah fifty five verse eight nine. Mm -hmm. so, that's good. Well, um, I want to tease you just a little bit because um, <laughs> I was going through my closet today oh, and oh. I wanted to wear red because I thought, well, yeah. Greg's going to wear chief stuff. I yeah. Mean, a I lot wasn't of times, sure to wear my chief stuff or not. So. Oh, you could have. Okay. But it's funny because all the red stuff I own say Marines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I was like, okay. Hey, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> well, I didn't want to have chiefs of Marines, so I thought, oh, well, this yeah. is the only other red shirt I own. Oh, I'm glad so, you I was trying to go no, no, I'm glad you did. Because I thought but, about it. Yeah. I was like, uh, I don't know. Would that be cheesy? No. Or, you know? no are you kidding me? You should, on so, a Sunday, I know you go to another church, but on a Sunday morning here, I don't care what type of season it is, but if you do come during football season, it's an <laughs> ocean of red. There? It really is. Yeah, I wish I, would, wish I would have called and so, asked. Oh, no. No, <laughs> you're fine. It's whatever you're comfortable in. But anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Greg, for coming out on a on a rainy, cold day and spending some of your time away from your family with us to, to talk chiefs, to talk salvation, to talk about God. Um, we appreciate that. And I know that we have a lot of viewers out there. I was 
telling one of my friends that, um, you know, even though it's coffee chats and it's women's ministry, I've been seeing some men tune in. So <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. they're really going to love this yeah. and maybe this will shoot our numbers up even more. <laughs> Man, that'd be awesome. That'd be so awesome. thank you very much. And, um, Please, uh, I think that we're getting toward the end of quarantine, so this might be one of our last coffee chats. But um, if not, we'll see you again. But if so, we'd love to have you join us here at Grace. If you have a question for Greg, please email me at diane, D-Y-A-N-N, at graceontheweb.org, and I'll see if I can get an answer from Greg and email you back. So thank you very much.